Hi everyone, hey this is Robert Seavey. I'm going to try to lead you through troubleshooting a engine cooling fan problem. Um, we've got a radiator fan down here in front. This particular vehicle, you can see it fairly easy right here. There's the connector to it. So, the easiest way to determine whether or not the fan is turning or not comes on. Start the engine, we'll turn the AC on. If the AC on, fan should come on. Now some vehicles have just one speed. The fan is on or it's off. This particular vehicle has a low and a high speed. So if the low speed comes on, that's for a lower temperature. You're going to have to wait then until it warms up and the high speed will come on. Low speed will turn off and the high speed will come on. If the high speed doesn't come on, you're definitely going to have an overheating problem. If the low speed just doesn't come on but the high speed works, you know, you might have a problem like this particular vehicle. It actually has the service wrench light that comes on. Um, that's what we're troubleshooting here. So, with that, this is the fuse and relay module. And this is the cover. Pick it off and roll it over. You can find the orientation to everything. Here are our fuses, relays, and additional fuses out here. And that's how we're looking at it right there fuses to the right. So we're going to check the fuse first thing, just to see if we actually have power to the fuse. And we're going to verify that the fuse is working. Now you can take this out and you could read resistance, but there's no real need to. Just have voltage on one side and then voltage on the other. Basically what that means then is the element, the actual fuse element, is closed. If it were open, let me get this thing out of here. If it were open, this is what you would read. We have voltage on one side. Now that's the source, that's the battery. This is going to the circuit on the other side, and there's nothing. So that would mean that the fuse is open, just like it is now. There's nothing there. The fuse is open. We'll put this back in, because we had it loose there for a reason. What we're going to do is we're going to test the fan. We're going to use that this side, which is the circuit side because we want to limit the current. We don't want it, if there's a short or something, we don't want to be taking something out or burning up the wires. So now here again, this is the high speed, this is the low speed. So with that, here are the relays. I'm taking those out, and I'll put a couple of uh, lug nuts in here because we're going to test this out. You take the relay out, roll it over to the side, which you'll see is basically what the relay looks like inside. 85, we'll roll this over and take a look again. 85 and 60 are the, those are the pins to the um, coil. So one side is 12 volts, the other side goes to the engine control module. I think this guy right here, engine control module will actually sink that to ground, therefore causing a current flow through that coil. That creates an inductive field and that then will close that contact between 87 and 30, those two pins, 87 and 30. 87 is power, that comes from the uh, fuse, and then 30, that goes to the circuit. Now, on this side, this coil, that's going to have its own fuse. That's a, a lower current, and that's going to probably, that's going to be inside of the cabin where the control fuses are. <coughs> so. With this, underneath, when you roll it over, you'll see the pin numbers. So here we're looking for pin 30, although 87, we're going to verify that 87 does have 12 volts there. So this is 87. Again, if you orientate it the way that it's set in there, it's like this. Turn it over, and 87 is here. That would be the top right. 30. It would be bottom left. Roll it over. Kind of see where your pins are there. All right, so this should have 12 volts, and it does. And one of these other guys should also have 12 volts, and it does. That's the voltage. Here again, coming from the cabin, so that fuse is good also. So we're going to take that out because we don't want to get confused. End up doing something we don't want to do. So this is where we're going to 30. And what we're going to do. I'm just going to use that fuse, 
we're actually just going to take 12 volts to the fan. I want to see if that fan will turn up. From here down here, is it blowing? Okay. So the high speed works. That fan, that circuit, through the relay is working. And we'll talk about the relays in a little bit. So now we're going to go to the low speed. So here again, we're going to orient it. Now this guy, if you notice, see this fuse here, it's actually turned the opposite direction. You got to be careful with that. Again, roll it over, pin 30. It's going to be the top right. This is where we're at. Top right pin right there. That connection. So from here, we're going to go to the 20 amp fuse because again, that's the low speed. You can hear it and you can see. It's not as loud. It's a slower spin. Now that was our problem on this car though, is that for that circuit, it would not spin up. So the first thing we did, out of curiosity here, just checking, this connector on the fan has two pins. One is for ground and the other one is for the fan. So those circuits somewhere are tied together. Uh, we do have a good ground. How would you test that is we are at ground. We got that on the engine right here. And then change it over here to resistance. Put this down here for you. Over well, here and we're just actually going to go to the audio. And there's our ground. Another thing, how would you know from the fan, how would you know that there's good continuity? You can do that too. That was our pin 30 right here. This is from the high speed. All right? If you need, if you, if you didn't have, the fan wasn't working, and you could go read the fan out down here too. We'll show you how to do that. You could actually go here to the other pin, and we have continuity. Now we knew on the low speed, we did not have that. We do now because the reason we didn't have that is for low speed, they throw these guys in here. This is a resistor. Basically, all that does is it drops the voltage available to the fan. It also reduces the current. Now, this thing, this is on a, uh, a view, a Saturn view. It's going to be similar to a lot of GMs, most likely, because that's what this thing is. It's a GM. It's got the Eco 2.2 liter in it. That thing located under here in front of the uh, driver's side just behind the uh, light. Take a look. It's actually mounted way down under here. Now, there's another one here. We can get to it and see it. There's another one right there. That may get, be a little confusing, but if you take a look at the wires here, Actually, still have we have the new resistor hooked up. If you take a look at the wires. What you'll notice is one of them's blue, just like this guy, as well as it's a it's a different gauge. That gauge definitely for some current flow. So this connector, black and white, and that right there. That's that's much smaller. It's not going to handle the current that this guy is supposed to, is going to have. So in this case that was our problem. Now if you go down to the fan, you just take a look down here, what you could do is you take a resistance reading across. There are two there are actually three pins, but again it's only using two. Ground and then the power to it. You read across those two guys right there. What you should have sorry about that, a big gump. I've tied my hand here. You have. I'll take this little wire off. Let me go down here. We can get down there. On the one side. We're still on resistance here. On the audio. Basically, what we've got is we've got windings that are good. If it were open, we wouldn't have anything. 
will be open. So if that all works though, if you test your fan and the fan comes up and runs, both the high and the low speed, next problem, if anything, it's hard to say, most likely it's going to be high speeds because there is so much current. Uh, these relays are the same. Again, like I say, most likely it's because the high speed, there's so much current involved in that. So, testing that out. We've got an old relay, well, a relay from another vehicle. Again, what we did here is we're going across, looking at the circuit on it. Now, you couldn't read these out that well, but when we're talking about 8586, that's what we've got, 8586. And we're going to tie it across the 12 volts and ground. You can hear that. So now the other thing we're going to do though is we're going to go between 30 and 87. In a second just to tie that up. And what you should not find, hopefully, we'll find this wire. One second here, let me get this set up. Eighty seven. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear my dog in there with his toy, his little chew toy. Now this shows point four ohm. However, looking at it one earlier, actually I'll show you this, you can probably see this, the resistance on this thing was much higher. So if you think, if everything else works, you most likely have a relay that is burnt, in which case if you do that test right there, you may find some resistance across it. Any kind of resistance across that thing is not good. There's so much current going through that circuit that any kind of a drop on this thing, it's just not going to be enough to um, enable it to work properly. So I don't know if you can see this, probably not on this thing. But one side, if you take a look at it, the contact is good. Well, that's the normally closed side. Let's see if we can get in here and see this. Probably not. But one side, you can see the good contact right there. All right, the other side, nothing nothing but black that's burnt that contact is not good so what you can do if you're in a bad situation you're out um, and you start getting overheating problem do this go back to your box take the cover off find your find your fan relay okay Again, we know this was our high speed. Which again, that high speed's not working. It's going to be overheating. Low speed, and eh, not necessarily so, because uh, once this guy, once it starts getting past the temperature, which this one works, it's going to hit this guy, and that's going to keep you cool. So, from here, what you can do is you've got other relays that actually aren't even being used, or you know, don't have that kind of current. You could swap it between the low speed and the high speed because here again they are both the same but also this vehicle has it a rear defogger I'm not using the rear defogger just take it out swap it and if it starts working cooling off then it is your relay okay um, you also have a wiper system I think I'm not sure it's the power door power windows who cares power windows right you got to keep the car running cool if that car running not running cool you're not going to like the results of that and what that's going to cost okay i hope this has helped um and um thanks again and may be able to fix this stuff all right bye